Good morning, friend. Welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Becky, if you're new, and today we are doing a bunch of breakfast meal prep for the freezer. I have been down and out with a cold for two weeks, and I really haven't done anything for, gosh, about a week now, and breakfast has kind of been a little bit of a pain point, and so this is what is motivating me now that I feel better. I might not sound 100%, but trust me, I feel a lot better. This is what's motivating me to get a couple of things prepped, breakfast items in my freezer so that on mornings when I just don't have the energy to cook, I can pull something out and heat it up. We've got two different quick breads we're making. We're gonna start with those. So I just preheated the oven to 350. So those can be baking while we're gonna make some copycat waffles, Eggo waffles, and we're gonna be making some French toast. We're gonna do some protein prep, some sausage, and I'm gonna make up a recipe. I saw something on Instagram, it inspired me, and I'm gonna adapt it a little bit and see if we can make something that's really delicious. I have one cup of butter melting in the microwave here. This is for our applesauce quick bread we're gonna make. This recipe is so delicious, and it uses a lot of applesauce, which is fantastic because I have a lot of applesauce from our orchard. So the first thing we're gonna start with is one cup of melted butter. Not that long ago, I had made some dinner freezer meals, and thankfully I did because we've been relying on those for the last two weeks here. And so I thought, you know what? It's time to get some breakfast items in the freezer. So to our butter, we're gonna add four eggs. One and a half cups of granulated sugar. Splash of vanilla three cups of applesauce, which is one and a half of these pints. We made this applesauce together. We picked these apples and we cooked them down and jarred them up together. I like this recipe because it uses so much applesauce. Now we're gonna mix all these wet ingredients together. Once we have these mixed together, we'll add the dry ingredients and then we'll have one recipe ready to go into the oven and we can move on to the next one. Looks like that butter wasn't fully melted. I'll just kind of smash that up a little bit, no big deal. I'm gonna add three cups of all-purpose flour. This is gonna make two loaves. We're gonna make four quick breads all together. one tablespoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, and I'm gonna sift that baking soda, and cinnamon. So I wanted to get this recipe made first. Once we mix this together, then we can get it into our bread loaves. Because the next quick bread recipe we're gonna make is a carrot quick bread. I've got a lot of carrots from the garden, and I figured this could be cooking while we shred up the carrots and that's just gonna be an extra step and I could get this in the oven while that is happening. And then both of these quick breads are gonna take a good solid hour or so to cook. And so while they're cooking, we can get going on the copycat egos and the French toast. And this recipe, we could add walnuts right now, but walnuts are not Josh's favorite. And so I'm gonna skip the walnuts in this recipe. And I think I'm gonna add the walnuts to the carrot bread recipe. So one of the recipes will have nuts, one won't have nuts. And so everybody can have something they like. So I have four bread pans here. I'm gonna go ahead and spray all four of them. Two of them will be for the apple loaves and two of them will be for the carrot loaves. You could line this with parchment paper if you wanted, but I'm just gonna do this. That should be just fine. Last time I made this, I didn't have any problems with getting it out. My oven's almost preheated. That didn't even take 10 minutes, not even, to get this bread made up. And we can just use this same bowl to make our carrot bread. We 
We made this recipe when we actually made the applesauce together. And it felt like such a treat cutting into this while it was still warm with some butter after a long day in the kitchen preserving apples. So I'm gonna put a little bit more of that in there. Try to make sure this is even. You could also put apple chunks in here if you wanted, but we're just gonna go with this. One recipe is done. I can get this applesauce in the fridge. I've got these leak proof lids for my mason jars. I absolutely love those. I can link those along with all the recipes we're gonna be making down in the description box. I rinsed out this jar. I unloaded my dishwasher this morning, so I'm gonna get that right in there so I can clean as I go. And then I've got the garden carrots here that need to be washed. And we need five cups of carrots. I'm gonna give them each individual carrot a good scrub. And I am gonna peel these carrots. I do have carrots that I've already shredded and put into the freezer. I could use those for this recipe, but I wanna use the fresh ones first because these could go bad. The ones in my freezer are already preserved, so I don't wanna use those quite yet. So we're gonna shred these up. I've just got my bowl with my eggshells and this is all gonna to go to the chickens. So I'm gonna peel my carrots. We need five total cups of shredded carrot. I think I'm gonna go ahead and peel all these. And then I did rinse out my bowl that we made the apple bread in. And I'll just put those in there and then I'll pull out my food processor. I was trying to decide if I should shred these by hand or if I should pull the food processor out. I still might do them by hand, I don't know, we'll see. I think this might be enough carrots here, so I'm gonna cut the tops and bottoms off and then I'm gonna pull, I decided I am gonna pull the food processor out and we'll get these shredded in the food processor. My measuring spoon here out or cup and I'm gonna see if that was five cups worth or if we need to peel a few more carrots. Looks like I need about one more carrots worth. So now we can make our bread and I'm gonna make it right in this bowl. So I'm gonna start with the wet ingredients in the bowl and that's gonna be six eggs. half a cup of milk. And this recipe uses oil as opposed to butter. And I'm gonna use avocado oil. One and a half cups. We're gonna whisk this together. I'm gonna go ahead and whisk in the sugar now. I've never actually had a carrot quick bread before, but I've got so many carrots from the garden and this 
recipe popped up on a reel for me, and I thought this would be the perfect way to use up a good amount of these homegrown carrots. And carrot cake is one of my favorite cakes, so I thought this, I mean, quick bread is almost like cake. Quick breads are pretty similar to cake, so I can't imagine it's going to be anything but delicious. That is cinnamon. Baking soda, my baking soda is lumpy, that's why I have to run it through this little sieve so that we don't get clumps in it. Whisk this together and then we can add our carrots. And I actually have pre-chopped pecans in my freezer. So instead of having to grab walnuts out and chop those like the recipe says, I'm gonna substitute pecans and I think that'll be delicious. If you don't have a Danish dough whisk, they are one of my favorite cooking utensils. Now that this is almost mixed together, this would be a good time to go ahead and get our carrots in there and our chopped pecans. This is supposed to make two loaves, but this seems like a lot of batter to me. They're gonna be pretty big loaves. Actually, this looks like it's gonna fit in here. I don't like to fill my quick bread tins more than halfway, because then they have a hard time baking all the way in the center. There is our carrot quick bread. Now that we have both breads in the oven, that is a huge accomplishment, and we can kind of move on to some other things. I think the next thing I wanna do, one, I'm gonna clean up these carrots first, because then we can just have a clean counter again, and I can get the food processor put away, I think what we'll move on to next is the egos. So growing up, my mom never bought egos. My mom would make us breakfast pretty regularly and she never purchased egos unless we were going on vacation. <laughs> and then it was a special treat to get egos. And I absolutely love ego waffles. And so I thought, why don't we try and see if I can find, just a second, my cord is caught here so my drawer is not closing. If I could find an ego copycat recipe, because I just think egos taste delicious. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna make our ego batter. So what I did is I went online and I just Googled ego copycat recipe. I found one and that's the one we're going to try making. So the first thing we need to do is melt a half a cup of butter, and I'm not gonna double this recipe because I want to see how well it turns out. It has really good reviews, and I think it's gonna be delicious. And even if it doesn't taste exactly like an Eggo, it's gonna be good as just a waffle. Waffles freeze beautifully. So if you ever need inspiration of what you could meal prep in advance, Walk down your freezer aisle at any grocery store and whatever they freeze, pancakes, waffles, French toast, breakfast sandwiches, those are things you could prep yourself if you want and fill your freezer with homemade items if that's something you're interested in. That needs just a little bit longer. This is a pretty simple recipe to throw together. To our eggs, I'm going, or to our butter, I'm gonna add our two eggs. I did go ahead and purchase some real buttermilk for this recipe because I wanted to see if we could get the flavor exact. Normally I just use milk with a little bit of lemon juice, but I wanted it to be 
follow the recipe exactly. Get that in there. We're gonna add some vanilla and some salt along with two teaspoons of sugar. And I have a teaspoon measure now. A friend sent me <laughs> measuring spoons. I haven't had a teaspoon measure in years. In the move, I lost my teaspoon. So I've been using a half teaspoon. So I'm really excited that now I have a teaspoon measure again. It's the little things in life, right? <laughs> so we're gonna whisk together our wet ingredients. I'm just looking at my ingredients to make sure that is everything we need. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add our dry ingredients, which is our flour. And this recipe calls for baking powder, not baking soda. And so we're gonna get that in there. And it's four teaspoons. I'm gonna get this mixed up. Did I add vanilla? I can't remember. It doesn't hurt to add a little extra, so if I forgot, I'm just gonna add a little, maybe a lot extra. Oh, it smells good. So that is our copycat Eggo waffle batter. We're supposed to let our batter sit for five minutes, and while that's sitting, I've got to grab my new mini waffle maker. So I did buy this little mini waffle maker for the Eggos, so I can link this down below if it works well. I just thought that was really cute, and the only waffle maker I have, it's not that great of a waffle maker, and it's square Belgian style with the big squares in it, and so, I thought I would go ahead and grab one of these. And I went with this one when I was looking online for the mini waffle makers. They have those dash ones, but they only make one waffle at a time. And so I purposely went with this one because I can make two waffles. I looked for one where I could make four. I didn't see that. So this I thought would be perfect. So our batter needs to sit and this needs to warm up. I should probably set it down now that I've plugged it in. And I think while that's sitting, I can go ahead and get my batter made for the French toast because I might as well not sit here and watch batter sit for five minutes. So I've got some more eggs and this obviously is gonna come together really quickly. And I need a bowl. I really should use is a pie pan. I'm gonna go grab a pie pan. So I'm gonna make my French toast in this pan. So I went ahead and got that out while I was getting things out. I got my pie pan and I'm just gonna make this whole loaf. Anytime I make French toast, even if I'm just making it for breakfast that morning, I always make a whole loaf of French toast because it freezes beautifully. If you're already gonna make the mess, I might as well make the whole loaf. We love French toast around here. I like that it has some protein in it. And my favorite way to eat it is with butter and applesauce. And you all know, I've got a lot of applesauce around here, so I'm excited. I haven't made French toast in a long time. I don't particularly follow a recipe when it comes to French toast. I just use whatever kind of bread I have on hand, eggs, I just kind of eyeball everything. Oh, throwing eggs. I think it's probably gonna use at least eight eggs for that whole loaf. We have taken a few pieces of the bread out of that loaf. We'll go with eight eggs. Then I always add vanilla to my French toast custard. And then I'm gonna add my milk. I have to shake this milk because it's non-homogenized. So the cream separates. Get that in there. You know what actually works better than this Danish whisk to do this is a fork. I grabbed this, so. Our waffle maker is hot. You know what, I think I'm gonna get a fork. Forks just usually work better for me for this. And I usually like to poke each yolk. Yeah, that's a lot easier. I think I may have put a little too much milk. We'll see after I mix this together. And then I'm not gonna add any cinnamon. I don't actually love cinnamon in my French toast. I kind of prefer it to be, no, that actually looks like a good amount of egg to milk ratio. 
because depending on what I wanna put on the top, sometimes I put jam on the top, sometimes we do butter and syrup, and so I don't really like the cinnamon in case I wanna put jam on the top of my French toast. And you know what, I think I'm gonna get a couple pieces of bread to start soaking in here so they can really absorb that custard. So this is a rustic style loaf of bread, but you could use a Texas toast, a sourdough, a brioche. Hopefully I didn't make too much custard but I kind of want this bread to soak here and absorb more of that custard than it just being on the outside. So we'll start getting these soaked and then we'll start making some waffles while these soak in here. I'm gonna go set this aside and wash my hands. Now some of the recipes when I was looking at Eggos called to put yellow dye in it because Eggos are very yellow, but I'm not gonna do that. We're just gonna go with the batter, the color from the eggs. And I've got a cookie scoop so that I can measure this out. I'm gonna do one cookie scoop to start that's kind of heaping. Close that and see how that does. Not quite done. I almost forgot, hopefully it's not. Oh, that looks perfect. How cute are those? So I've got a cooling rack here. I'll let those cool. I think I can put a little bit more in there. So I'm gonna do a big heaping scoop. And these do take some time. So while these are cooking, I don't wanna overstuff it. Ah. We're gonna go like that. Close that and then we'll do a taste test once those cool a little bit. Oh my goodness, I just realized I forgot. I've got a cornbread muffin recipe we're gonna make with sausage. I almost forgot about that. I was like, we're almost done. We still are almost done. This is going super quickly. But I wanna get going and starting to cook some of the French toast. And so that I can have the French toast cooking over here and my waffles cooking over here because both of those take a little bit of time and I think I can manage both of them. The apple bread is almost done. Now when I cook my French toast, I like to cook it in a little bit of butter. And I'm gonna use this because it's big and I can cook quite a few pieces of French toast on this pan at one time. And for the corn muffins, I'm gonna turn this oven on to 350. Start. Our egos smell really good. I've got good faith in them. I think the vanilla is a key component and using real buttermilk in it. Pan is heated through. I might be crazy for doing this, but I have waffles going, bread going, French toast going, and now I'm gonna make the batter for the cornbread. This is my mom's cornbread recipe, and I saw, oh. That is our apple bread. So we are going to go ahead and test our apple bread to see if it's done. Let me get a tester. So I saw this recipe on Instagram come up. Oh my goodness, look at this for muffins, let's see. No, I think I'm gonna give them another five minutes. For muffins that were made with pancake batter, just a store-bought pancake batter, and sausage and cheddar cheese. Well, I thought, I've got these corn mixes that I need to use up. What if I made cornbread with sausage and cheddar cheese and baked it in a little muffin and it would be like a sausage corn cake muffin thing. So we're gonna try it and see if it's any good, but I think I should check my French toast first. And I'll let you know how it goes and not quite ready to flip. That actually looks like it's ready to flip. Not quite yet. I'm just gonna rotate it though hotter on the inside. And 
and I bet our waffles are done. Before I do anything, I'm gonna set the timer for four more minutes. Hey Siri, set timer for four minutes. Oh my goodness, look at those. Perfect. They're a little darker than the first ones, but that seemed to be a good amount of batter, so kind of a heaping spoonful. And let's give one of these a try. They're good. Do they taste of an ego of my childhood? No, not exactly. But they taste like a really good waffle. So I'll keep cooking them up. Timer just went off for the apple bread. So I need to get that out of the oven, but I also want to get these off Oop. the stove as well and get some new ones on. So I'm going to do this real quick. And I'm putting them on a cooling rack as well so they can cool individually. Get a little bit more butter in here. Some of these middle pieces of bread, there was big holes in them. I think we may have made the perfect amount of egg custard. I am so glad I finally had the time to do some of this breakfast meal prep because we have been using it and it has just been so convenient having it ready to go. We love the waffles. Do they taste exactly like an Eggo? No, but they are delicious. And you saw how much vanilla went in there. So the vanilla and the real buttermilk just really had a wonderful, delicious flavor. And we've been really enjoying these. You're gonna see, I'm gonna do some protein prep too, so that on the days that we have the French toast and the waffles, we have some protein prepped as well. And so just breakfast has been so easy. Look, perfect amount. And I haven't really had to think about breakfast and it's just been really, really nice to have this prepped and ready to go for us. Okay, I needed just a break there so that we could make this cornbread muffin. So I've got my cornbread mix here. You could use whatever kind of cornbread you'd like or whatever mix you have on hand. And we're gonna get this in here. This is about a cup of sharp cheddar cheese. And then I need to add my butter. And I've got milk pre-measured and water pre-measured. I only am adding water because I'm using freeze-dried eggs. Otherwise, I would be adding eggs to this. So we're gonna mix this together. So it's going to be a cheese cornbread muffin with sausage. I have some pre-cooked sausage here. I'm gonna add that in just a minute. So this is going to be a protein little bite. I need to check my French toast in just a second. I did go ahead and set a timer for my carrot bread because that is gonna take a little bit longer than the apple bread since it did not get put in the oven right when the apple bread did. So this is about half mixed now, so I'm gonna add probably 
about a cup and a half of cooked sausage. And then I'm gonna get this back in the freezer. And you obviously do not need to add any of this sausage or cheese or anything if you don't want to. And you could just make some corn muffins for the freezer. But I thought this would be nice because it would be kind of protein and all of it packed into one. So now I'm gonna mix the rest of it in. And this was breakfast sausage that I put in here. And then, check my French toast. Hopefully it's perfect. Good timing on that. It's kind of like musical chairs around here. One thing to the next to the next. Oh, that's my timer for the carrot bread. I doubt that's done. Oh wow, okay, that's more done than I thought it was gonna be. No, it's got a good jiggle to it. Five more minutes. Apple bread's been out of the oven for a few minutes, so I wanna get it out of these tins. How beautiful is that? Let those cool. So I've got a cookie scoop and I'm going to use the cookie scoop to fill these muffin tins. This was a total experiment on this day, adapting what I had seen on that Instagram reel and they are absolutely delicious. We have so enjoyed these. I like these because they've got the protein in everything and they thaw really quickly. You can warm them up in the microwave in 30 seconds and maybe have a piece of fruit or something. And it was just, well, we still have some. I was gonna say they've been just delicious. You could use bacon, turkey bacon, no meat at all, just cheese. I mean, they're totally adaptable. I do wanna try it using the pancake mix because I think that would be delicious. The one thing about the cornbread to note is they are a little bit crumbly because they don't have as much gluten as say a pancake mix would. And so that is something to note, but they have been so convenient and delicious. I just took the bread, the carrot bread out of the oven so I can turn this oven off. And I've got one more thing on the stove I wanna cook. I almost forgot and I've already thawed it out so it needs to be cooked. The butcher that I purchased my local hog from does not make breakfast links or breakfast patties. I just get bulk one pound packages of breakfast sausage. And because a lot of these breakfast items that I made don't have that much protein in them, and Josh and I do like to have some protein with our breakfast, I wanna go ahead and get some sausage patties made up so that I can just reheat them on the stove, in the microwave. If you have an air fryer, you could reheat them that way. So it'll be just a convenient way to have some breakfast sausage where I don't have to remember to thaw the meat and then cook the meat. It'll already be prepped. I'm gonna use the same dish that I used to make the French toast in so that I don't have to dirty another dish. So I have my sausage here and what I'm gonna do is just take a piece of the sausage and I'm gonna shape it into a patty. Then we'll get these cooked up. I'm really glad I took the time to do this because I had already thought the meat, I almost skipped it because I was like, I'm done. But it's been really convenient having these in the freezer. You can buy pre-cooked shaped sausage, but I buy, you know, a whole hog at a time. And so I want to try to use what I already have in my freezer. And so it's so nice that I have these convenient sausage patties that are pre-cooked in my freezer. Now, I've been able to pull them out and make some breakfast sandwiches really quickly with them. And on days where, you know, I we've been having French toast, I can warm some of those up or we could have sausage and egg, you know, cuz I could cook up eggs with any of these you know, things we prepped. And so it's just been really, really convenient. This is the first time I've done this with sausage patties for the freezer. I have 
had pre-cooked sausage crumbles in my freezer lots and pre-cooked bacon. And so this was the first time I actually have made sausage patties for the freezer. So here we have all of what we've done today. We have our savory sausage. We've got our French toast, our waffles, our muffins. These are already approved by my family members. They are absolutely delicious. And I will absolutely make those again our apple bread and our carrot bread. We can go ahead and get most of these packaged up. My carrot bread is still cooling and I want it to com be completely cool before I throw it in the freezer. I think I'm gonna keep one of the carrot breads out for us. And then the rest of this, I'm gonna go ahead and package up for the freezer. Now, the what I have for the freezer are these silicone reusable bags. I love these things, but I am pretty selective about what I use them for because they can be a pain to clean if you put stuff in them that really needs to be scrubbed a lot. So I really like using these silicone bags for things like this. Waffles, muffins, things where I'm not gonna have to spend a lot of time scrubbing. I never put raw meat in them. I never put anything that could transmit an odor like garlic or anything because that could settle in the bags. But for something like this, I have no problem using a silicone reusable bag. I really like it. And we're gonna get these in here. So I can link these down below if you're interested in a silicone bag. And then I'm gonna go also go ahead and put some waffles and French toast together because that would be great. I could pull this bag out. It's got some waffles and French toast, put this in the refrigerator and this could be my family's breakfast for the week. We'd each have one or two pieces of each of that for breakfast. That would be great, so no problem mixing the French toast and waffles together. I never use raw meat or anything like that with these bags either. If I'm gonna use these, if I'm gonna freeze raw meat, I always just use a freezer bag so that I can just go ahead and toss it when I'm done with it. So we got so much breakfast done. I am so happy about this. I am not gonna have to think about breakfast for the foreseeable future. I can pull out some sausage. I already have some pre-cooked bacon in my freezer. So we can either have bacon or sausage and we could have French toast, waffles, apple bread, carrot bread, or these sausage cheddar corn muffins. These things are fantastic, my friend. I wasn't so sure, they looked really good, with the pancake version and then I had this idea to do it with the corn version and I totally made this up and it is absolutely delicious and my family loves them. They've already dug into them and a few of them are gone at this point. I need one more bag it looks like. The way that I'm gonna package up this quick bread is I will wrap it in a layer of saran wrap and then I will wrap it in a layer of foil, pop that in the freezer and then to let it thaw, I just put it in the refrigerator to thaw overnight. And one of those will last us for a week's worth of breakfast. So friends, thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed this, I will pop some of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I just wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me in the kitchen. And if you're interested in any of these recipes, they will be linked down below. I greatly appreciate you and I hope you are having a fantastic day. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.